Welcome back to Leeds Lately. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button because it really helps me out. But today's video is going to be about Maximilian Vauber, the centre back slash left back from RB Salzburg. And yes, we are again going for a Salzburg player, but it looks like there's pretty good evidence behind this one and, and it's something that will probably happen early on in January. Maximilian Volber is a 24-year-old Austrian defender. He has played at centre-back for most of his career, but this season he's been playing a lot at left-back for, for Salzburg. But in the system at Leeds, he could be utilised as either a centre-back or a left-back as he is left-footed. So he could either slot into that left-sided centre-back role or he could slot into the left-back role, allowing Pascal Strauch, who I think is probably a stronger defender than Liam Cooper, to actually come inside and, and play in his natural position. Now... I talked about this the other week. Um, there are some issues with our defending and Maximilian Volber is not the answer to all of our issues. He could help us out because he seems to be a good, solid defender. He's a captain, he's leader material and I'm always an advocate of having leaders in your team and especially in that back line. And I think with Liam Cooper sort of slowly being phased out, hopefully so that Pascal Strauch has a clear route to be in that starting left centre-back, a leader like Maximilian Volber helps that transition happen um, because you have leaders on the pitch then. Um, and I think somebody like him, being the leader that he is, being able to command a, a back line and being able to, to talk to his teammates around him, even though he's new and even though he's young, he's, the, he's a captain for a reason uh, of that Salzburg side. So I think that's a really, really promising sign from him. Um, he looks to be okay on the ball. He gets forward a little bit, but he's also mostly solid defensively, as you'd expect from a natural centre-back. Now, before I get comments saying that we need a natural left back and not a left centre back who can play there because that's what we've already got in Pascal Strauch. I know. And I totally agree with you as well. The issue is for me, we need to sign a left back as well. Um, but I don't understand why we gave Diego Lorente a new contract if we were going to buy another centre back in there. Uh, you kind of have to treat it as a separate position though, because that right centre back role and that left centre back role are completely different in terms of who can actually play there because you wouldn't really want a right footed player on that left hand side. Having said all that, it looks like we are going to be signing Maximilian Vauber and hopefully a left back as well. But this video is going to be a more general analysis of our defence. I'm recording this the day after the Man City defeat 3-1. I did a live stream for that. And in that, I mentioned some of our defensive flaws. So let's talk about the defensive flaws that we had prior to our little change of system. The tactics board makes another appearance. Let's just angle that so you can't see the light. So... One of our biggest issues was that when we went up the field, let's say that the right back is up here and everybody else is sort of pushed up. And so really we've sort of slotted into a bit of a three here. The issue comes when this player gets the ball, comes down this side. There is always an easy switch on into this path of this player here who's waiting at the back post. And we actually did see that a few times against Man City, namely in that first half where Jack Grealish had those chances at the back post that he skied, which were terrible, by the way, for a £100 million player not to be scoring them is mental. But we move. We're talking about here the switch in play now. This has been counteracted a little bit by the fact that we've now gone to more of a 4-3-3 system. So the issue was before that if we were playing four two three one like this you've got no width because jesse liked his uh liked his attacking midfielders to play pretty narrow so you didn't really have any width in here which meant that that was the fullback's job to provide that width and those fullbacks providing that width then left those massive gaps in behind them so what Jesse's done in the international break for the World Cup, he's tweaked it slightly. So now it looks like we'll be playing a 4-3-3. And when we're out of possession, we stay narrow. Um, and that means that these players can provide two banks of three, basically, as a defence in front of these uh, defenders to try and stop the play coming down the middle. But what it also does, and I think more importantly to this system, what it also does is it allows these players to be the wide men. So when we've got the ball, we have, uh, let's say it's Somerville and Nyonto or Sinister and Aronson, any of those combination of players, it allows them to actually act 
as proper wide men. Now, what this also ena enables, sort of, as a product of that, is these fullbacks don't have to push up as much. So when these are providing the width, we can sort of provide a little bit of backup there, but our fullbacks don't have to get too high. And when they don't have to get too high, it means that they can stay more solid at the back and that switch of play isn't as much of an issue. This doesn't solve everything though, because Man City still managed to score three goals against us. And the epitome of our defending was um, epitomized, for want of uh, using the same word again, by Haaland's second goal. Now, Haaland's second goal happened like this. So let's say we've got two defenders here and we've got some in the box as well and then midfielders helping out and whatever. So you've got Grealish here. Actually, he was outside. Grealish here and Haaland here. Haaland started with the ball here. Now, these players, these two players here, are so worried about Haaland shooting that they go towards the ball, which is totally fair enough given the position that he was in. But Haaland then passes the ball into Jack Grealish. Now, what the players should do is one mark Haaland's run and one go to Grealish to try and stop the cross. But what instead happened was the ball was passed from Haaland to Grealish. Both of our defenders got sucked over to um, Grealish, so when Grealish played the ball back across to Haaland, who pretty much stayed still, Haaland was just able to run onto the ball and whack it in the back of the net. Now, for me, that is one of our biggest issues. The reason that is an issue is because our defenders should not be getting caught out like that. Our defenders are basically making schoolboy errors and getting sucked out to the man. Now, when you're playing against Man City, I suppose as a professional footballer, it's probably easy to think, oh my God, that's Haaland, he's about to shoot. That's Grealish, he's about to shoot and go and get drawn to the man. But really, they should have been coached by now in their careers to not get sucked to the ball like that. Both of them went to Grealish, left Haaland on his own. It's a lack of communication in that back line. And this is what I was talking about with Maximilian Voba. Hopefully, having an extra leader in the defence like Maximilian Voba will help to sort of curtail these little mistakes that we're making in saying, okay, you go, like Rasmus go, um, Cox stay or whatever, and not both of them get sucked over to the ball. But they should know that themselves. And the other thing that I suggested was, I don't actually, I haven't looked through the extensive list of coaching staff at Elland Road, but, or at Thor Park, should I say, to me, Jesse needs to work with a defensive coach because I think... Jesse needs to understand that his weakness is coaching defences. His strength is coaching attacks, and we've seen us do really well through our attacks, through individual brilliance and through transitional play, that we've seen that it can work and his system can work well on the attack. On the defence, however, we're really, really bad. And if he was to work with a defensive coach, which he may have done over the, over the World Cup break, and it may have just been that it's his first game trying this new way of playing, um against a Premier League team like Man City who are, let's be honest, they're unbelievable and they were always going to blow us away. But we had chances because of our attacking threat. But we need to address the fact that we are simply not good enough at the back. And if Jesse is to work with the defensive coach and try and get us a little bit better in that aspect, I think that this Leeds team could do really well and stay up comfortably this season. It's just that we need to sort it fast. And somebody like Maximilian Vauber coming in is probably a great signing for Leeds. We need a left back as well. I don't think we're going to do a striker this January, but a left back as well would be absolutely ideal. Um, and it remains to be seen how this system will work in the next coming games. The next one is against Newcastle, who potentially could be a little bit cocky given the position that they're in in the league. I think Eddie Howe's maybe a little bit more switched on than that, but they could be, especially because it's, it's at their ground, it's at St. James's Park. So they could be a little bit more not cocky but confident in the way they the way they've been playing and the way they uh the way well can't speak today where they actually are in the league um because they're up to second at the moment which is ridiculous um but if they are to come at us like Arsenal did and like some of the other teams did like Liverpool we could actually get at them and we could actually uh we could actually beat Newcastle i think Eddie Howe would maybe be a bit more pragmatic than that and be a bit more switched on and sort of realize that the way to beat Leeds is to to sit back and hit us on the break cuz our defensive problems like we've covered in this video 
are quite extensive, but I will be doing a full match reaction to that. I can't do uh, a live watch along because I'm away for New Year, but I will have uh, a match reaction out on the channel with some more tactical analysis in it. So let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more videos like this, exploring our new signings and how they will actually affect us tactically um, rather than just the statistics about them. Um, but yes, that's going to be the end of this one. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on Leeds Lately.